Hello. In this video, we are going to apply the Lewis structure method, the Lewis Langmuir theory, to a semiconducting crystal. In a crystal of silicon, which has the same structure as the diamond structure of carbon, each silicon atom is tetra coordinated. It is bound to four other silicon atoms. Each is formed by a two electron single bond. So here we have a representation of an extended structure. The bonds at the edges are to be imagined as continuing on beyond the border. We can think of the red electrons as being the upspin and the blue electrons as being the down electron. So we notice that we have satisfied the Pauli exclusion principle. Now in a semiconductor, it is possible to excite one or more electrons from the valence band. And the valence band is the set of all the uh, bonding orbitals that are colored in gray on our diagram. And it's possible to excite one of these electrons and have it move into the conduction band whereby the electron is free to move throughout the crystal. Now, in the lewis langmuir theory, there is no convenient and simple way to represent the conduction band using this type of a diagram. But we can just simply imagine that the electron is free to move. Now, notice that once the electron has been promoted, we have an empty location where electron could have been, but isn't right now. And we call these particular um, structures holes because in many ways the absence of an electron acts like the presence of a positively charged particle which we call a hole and just as the electron is free to move throughout the conduction band the positively charged hole is free to move through the valence band and to see that for example we could take one of the electrons here and move it to this location so in effect the hole has moved from here to here. And again, if this electron over here moves in this direction, that is equivalent to the hole moving from there to there. So we see that in a semiconductor like silicon, uh, one electron is promoted into the conduction band, and at the same time, and that's, for, that's a negatively charged particle that is free to move, and we have left behind a hole, and the hole is also free to move throughout the valence band. In a crystal of pure silicon, each silicon atom contributes four valence electrons. Therefore, there are exactly enough electrons so that we can put four uh, pairs of electrons, eight total, around each silicon atom. We can therefore satisfy the octet, filling up these gray regions, even though for silicon, since it is in the third row or below of the periodic table, it has the potential of expanding the octet in a typical silicon semiconductor, the only uh, bonding positions that are used are those of the simple octet. Now, if we replace one of the silicon atoms with gallium, gallium has only three valence electrons. So we have enough electrons throughout the entire system to form a complete octet around each silicon atom. But at least at the beginning, we only have seven electrons available around gallium. So now we notice that we have a position here where we could have had an electron, but there isn't one currently present, which we recognize as being a hole. And now, even without promotion of electron, this hole is free to move. So if, for example, this electron moves from this bond to here, that is equivalent to the hole moving from there to there. And equivalently, this electron can move and now the hole has moved from here to there. So even without promotion, in this type of doped semiconductor, we dope it with gallium, we have a hole present and the hole is free to move throughout the valence band. Since the hole is positively charged, this is known as a P-type semiconductor and to have P-type doping. Now let us imagine 
that we replace one of the silicon atoms with arsenic. An arsenic atom has five valence electrons. Recall that if every single atom in the crystal were silicon, and silicon each has four valence electrons, we had precisely the correct number of electrons to fill up uh, an octet around each silicon atom. But if we replace one of the silicons with arsenic, effectively we now have one extra electron. And we can put the one electron in one of the white boxes here, just to put it somewhere on our diagram. And now we have one electron that is automatically promoted into the conduction band. So we have an electron, a negatively charged carrier that's free to move throughout the crystal. It will not form any one of the bonds because um, each of the bonding orbitals is already completely full in the uh, valence band. The only open locations are in the conduction band. And since we have a negatively charged carrier that's free to move throughout the crystal, this is an n-doped semiconductor or an n-doped material. So we see that by applying the basic principles of Lewis structures, we can gain some insights into the properties of semiconductors, both neutral ones and doped, whether doped with a uh, holes, as if we had replaced silicon with gallium, or if we dope with electrons in the process whereby we had replaced a silicon with an arsenic atom. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.